there's been a lot of talk recently about like throwback fighters and you know which fighters take it back to the old school and how there's a lot of fighters nowadays that want to play all this A side diva. Oh, I I get to make the rules because I'm the big name bullshit. Well, some of you guys that may be following a lot of the fights that I've been reviewing, particularly the little guys, may have seen recently a few videos back. Um, this past uh, weekend, Ganagan Lopez defeated Yuki Mura for the WBC World Light Flyweight Championship. Ganagan Lopez had initially challenged for that same title uh, last July against Pedro Guevara. Pedro Guevara won that fight by unanimous decision in Guevara's hometown of Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico. Went over to Japan and lost the controversial majority decision to Yukimura in Kyoto, Japan, in Kimura's hometown. Ganagan Lopez, after just dethroning Kimura in Japan, is now calling out Pedro Guevara. Even though Pedro Guevara isn't even his mandatory. Pedro Guevara isn't his number one contender. None of that. Uh, Ganagan Lopez is mandatory, incidentally, is Jonathan Taconing of um, the Philippines. But th that's just the thing. You know, he has, he has, um, he has time to, to make that defense. Ganagan Lopez's first order of business is revenge. He wants to go avenge that loss that, that he had to Pedro Guevara. And mind you, Ganagan Lopez is a guy with a with a bunch of losses on his record. He's he's one of these guys that racked up a bunch of losses early in his career, that got matched tough as soon as he turned pro. One of the hard knock fighters, like like um, like Juan Manuel Marquez, like Orlando Sleeve. Some of these guys, you know, they get tossed in there with you know a pretty seasoned guy from the jump, pretty much. You know, they're fighting guys with. With a, a good number of wins under the belts. And sometimes you take some losses on the come up like that. And I mean shit. Ganagan Lopez. He's been he's been at it for a minute now. He's uh, 34 years old. He's been a pro since 2003. And he's a, he's a world champion now. And his, his first order of business. Is to take care of business. By beating the guy that beat him a year ago. He's, he's a little bit salty about that. He wants some get back. And it's good to see that. You know. Um, there's a lot of fighters right now who they might beat or get draws or get controversial draws or, you know, maybe not look so great against fighters. And then a few years later, like all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're, they're getting big money and they're champions and stuff, but they don't want to go back and right the wrong that was wrong to them. And, and I don't get that. I mean, to me, it's like if, if, if there's a guy out there lingering that, has um has the air of being better than you? You need to go. You need to go take care of that. Gunnagan Lopez wants to go take care of that. Um, I mean, I'm sure this is gonna take place in Lopez's hometown, which is Mexico City. And since I made that Marquez versus Vargas video, since Marquez, regardless of who his opponent is gonna be, is probably gonna be fighting in Zocalo, Mexico City. Uh, fuck it. Put Gunnagan Lopez as the co-feature. Two world championship bouts right there. Well, I mean. The Marquez belt probably won't be a world championship belt unless uh, unless he does get Vargas to sign on the dotted line. But um, Ganago Lopez uh, is a hell of a little fighter, man. Um, I, I suggest you guys watch his fights with Pedro Guevara and with uh, Yuki Mura. He's a crafty little son of a bitch, man. His, um, his fight with Mario Rodriguez is another good one against a high-level fighter. His um, Also, his fight versus Luis Ceja. Uh, Luis Ceja is the older brother of... Um, Former Super Bantamweight World Champion Julio Seja. Shout out to the Seja brothers. Because um, uh, considering the Seja brothers connection to Heyman. Maybe Luis Seja can get Heyman to uh, televise one of these 105 pound fights on uh, PBC. Bring, 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 some shine to the, bring some shine to the mighty minis. Uh, I'm down for it. And um, yeah man. Uh, Ganagan Lopez... Is showing the throwback mentality. We need more fighters to be showing the throwback mentality. We need more fighters that, uh, um, if there's if there's any if there's any doubt about what happened in the past, you need to go handle that for the present and the future. <laughs> you know, because 
eventually when you guys are are, are retired and old and when I look back on your careers, I mean, I, I'm sure there's going to be some, there's going to, there's going to be some lingering, um, some lingering regret if you don't go back and, 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 and take care of that. I mean, otherwise people are going to be, be, uh, able to speculate and talk about anything and everything and talk about like, oh, well, he never, he never avenged that loss. And, you know, he, he could have fought this guy, but he avoided it after the fact, you know, um, I mean, I hear at least Arslandi Lara is supposedly going to be running it back with Von Smotorosian. And um, if he actually does that, props to him. I mean, he he definitely missed the chance to do it against Carlos Molina. So, I mean, at, at least now he could do it with Vannes, So, But Lopez just became a world champion. And the first thing out of his mouth is he wants Gravada. And Gravada is not a... He's no, he's no easy fight, man. Gravada's a damn good fighter. Gravada potentially is really the most skilled guy at the weight class. Possibly. I mean, uh, eye test wise, I'd probably say he probably is. But, um, you know, the Kimura fight, I, I didn't think he lost that fight. Gravada should really be an undefeated fighter right now. Uh, the Lopez versus Gravada, their first fight was excellent. Very close fight. Gravada nicked it. Um, their, their upcoming fight... It may be different. It may be different. You know, um, Gravada probably is, uh, has more to improve upon just by being a younger guy. Um, Lopez, though, I mean, he, he's probably got plenty to improve upon himself, though, too, because he just has a very awkward, jerky style, man. He's, uh, he's difficult to time because he really doesn't have a tell. But, you know, that's getting into everything and, and um, if and when they do get this fight signed, I'll do a running it back episode on this and uh, review their first fight in full. But, I mean, either way, just uh, props to Lopez for uh, just making it known that he's, 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 he's down for it. You know, he's, he, he's not trying to leave any doubt out there as to who the champ is. You know, he's, uh, he's not letting it. Go by the wayside. He's not just gonna. He's not just gonna say, "Oh no, I'm the champion." You know, I'm just gonna fulfill my mandatory and um, to hell with Pedro Guevara. You know, he's he's not the champion anymore. Yeah, this belt's mine now. Nah, no, 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 no. He knows what it is. He knows. He knows that there was controversy with the Kimura fight, and um, I mean, he beat Kimura, and he beat Kimura clearly. He dom- He beat Kimura dominantly. Uh, and you know, even if you want to say Guevara beat Kimura, he didn't do it in the fashion that that uh Lopez did so that's it man props to Lopez doing a big time doing a throwback style <laughs>